Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm bringing you a tie-dye Photoshop tutorial. This was a requested video. So I'm going to show you how to do a basic twisted tie-dye in this video, but you can do this in any shape that you want and I'm going to go over some of the settings so you can play with those on your own and come up with some interesting ideas. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you're seeing here is just a color palette for the gradient that we're going to be using in our tie-dye today. You can use any color that you want. It doesn't have to be these colors and in fact using more or less color will give you a whole different look to the tie-dye that you're creating. So I'm just giving you a guide here and I'll give you a few examples of how to style this and you know how to make your own but um, I do want to show you how to create the gradient just in case you're going with custom colors. So I'm here in the gradient tool right here and I have this one selected. This is the gradient that I created. I'm going to come back here to the basics because I want to show you how I created this from scratch. So what I did was I made these shapes here and I selected the colors that I wanted to use. And I usually do this when I'm creating a gradient because it just makes it so much easier than closing this and then coming back to color and all of that. So I'm going to come here to my very first stop and this is uh, at location zero and I'm going to go ahead and click on the color and then I'm just going to click over here. So that's going to load that color. That's going to be my first color. Now I'm just going to come here and click anywhere, click on it again, do the same thing again, you know, and I'm just going to keep going here until I have all of my colors loaded. Okay, once I have all of those colors in there, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. All you have to do is just drag it off and it'll disappear. Uh, but I want to repeat all of these colors again. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that first color and then make sure that that is selected and then just drag out. I'm going to do the same thing with the next one. Just drag it out and the next until I have all of these colors repeated. Now as far as the spacing goes for this, it doesn't really matter how your spacing is. I think I had mine at like 9% 9, 9 per uh, for the one that I am going to leave down in the description and I'll leave this one as well. But um, you can easily just eyeball this, you know, to get an idea of where you want the gradients. It doesn't really matter that they're perfectly separated. We do want this to, to look kind of random because tie-dye is random. So I'm just kind of spreading those, spacing those apart. And I'm going to click this button right here to add that, except it added it to my basics. So I'm going to bring it down. And then this is the this is another one that I created. So I'll go ahead and leave both of these down in the description just in case you want those or you can create your own. But I just wanted to show you how to create it. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I have that new gradient loaded. And I'm using this right here. This is the radial gradient. You can use the linear or really any of these if you want. Uh, but since we're going with that spiral type tie-dye, I'm just going to go ahead and use this one. So I'm going to open up a new document. I'm going to come here to File, New. And I'm going to save it at 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels. My resolution is 72 because this is for the screen. You would go up to 300 or more um, if you want something for print. I'm using RGB color mode and I'm in 8-bit and I'm going to go ahead and click create and bring my layers back up here. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock this background layer by clicking on that little lock icon there and I still have my gradient selected here. This is the gradient that I just created. Again, I'm here in radial gradient. You can use any of these and come up with any style, but since we're doing that spiral thing, I am using this one. So I'm just going to drag that out from the center to add that gradient there. Now I'm going to right click and convert this to a smart object. And I'm going to come here to filter, distort, and wave. So for the, the wave, I'm just, the whole point of this is to make it look a little more random. And you know, this is a little too perfect for tie dye, you know, considering how it's created. So I'm just going to leave the uh, generator is at 1. My wavelength is for this 274 and max 329. That really doesn't matter. You can work with this, you know, to get something that you like. 
but these numbers right here I would pay more attention to your preview and go with your preference rather than you know specific numbers here the amplitude I have is uh, minimum 70 maximum 206 and then I have them scaled at 50% horizontally and vertically repeat edge pixels is selected and my type is sign I'm gonna go ahead and click OK so I did want to mention one thing before I move on so when I come here to these filters because I'm gonna be using them a lot here uh, in other videos I've had people tell me that they're not seeing some of these and originally I thought that was because they were using a PC and I'm using a Mac because it, you know it's, I forget I've used a PC before with this but my memory kind of fades because I haven't used it uh, a PC in a long time so this actually um, has nothing to do with whether you're using a PC or a Mac um, the reason that some of you do not have this is because you actually have to load them in here so let me show you I'm gonna come here to Photoshop and then go to preferences and I'm gonna come here to plugins you need to make sure that this is checked the show all filter gallery groups and names if it's not checked then all of your filters are not going to show up down at the bottom so I know I've told people before that oh it's probably you're on a PC or something but no it's not that it's just you just need to check this off so I just wanted to that was just kind of a side note just in case that's an issue for anybody I'm gonna go ahead and keep going here so I'm gonna add a new layer and this layer is gonna be like our bleach layer it's also gonna control the entire shape of this and I'll show you what I mean by that here in a minute I'm gonna press uh, the option and delete key to add my my foreground color I am on default here uh, white and black so it doesn't matter if you use a black or a white but it does have to be black and white here so once I have that filled I'm gonna right click convert this to a smart object and now I'm gonna start adding my filters to this so I'm gonna come here to filter render cloud then I'm gonna come back here filter again distort and I'm going to use this one right here it's called twirl so I'm going to use an angle of 100 degrees this is going to be entirely up to you you can go uh, much more or much less you can take this way up if you wanted to but I'm gonna just keep this pretty simple um, and I'll leave it at 100 degrees there I'm gonna click OK so you kind of see it kind of nudged it there now I'll come back into filter this time I'm gonna to go to distort and pinch so for my first pinch I'm using 70 percent and again you can zoom out to see what this is gonna look like for you and I'm gonna click OK now I'm gonna come back into filter distort and I'm gonna do pinch again this time I'm taking it all the way up to 100 and I'm gonna click OK so I've got this area out here that I don't like if you like that that's fine I don't like the way it looks so what I'm gonna do is press the letter V on my keyboard to bring up these anchors and I'm going to stretch my canvas a little bit just to cover these so I'm gonna hold the option key and then just drag out you'll see something that looks like this so you're not gonna be able to see what you're doing for a minute here uh, but we're just gonna drag it out and then I'm gonna hit return just to make it a little bit bigger and hide that area up there now from here we're gonna change the blend mode to linear dodge and you can see that it's very bright so we're gonna make some layer adjustments here I'm gonna press command and the letter L control in the letter L on a PC I'm not gonna do anything with my highlights and shadows I'm gonna keep those 0 and 255 I am going to work with the midtone here I'm going to bring it closer to my highlights and again this is all preference but I'm going to go ahead and leave it right there we'll leave it at 0.45 and I'm going to click OK so this is the basic tie-dye I also want to show you a few style options so the first thing I'm going to do is come up here to filter and these are just options I mean this looks fine the way it is but we can come here to distort make sure that you are on that top layer so we're gonna come here to ripple I'm gonna leave my size at medium there are 
you know, different options here, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at medium and I'm leaving it at 230. I could take this way up, you know, or in the other direction if I wanted. It's a little too much. So we'll go here, 230, and I'm going to click OK. And you can see how you've got that ripple effect here. So this is just one styling option. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. You can see the difference. Um, they both look equally nice. You can also make a copy of this layer. So I'm going to right click new smart object via copy. I think what I'm gonna do is turn the ripple on this one, and then for this one, I will take down the opacity. So you're still, you're kinda of getting both, and then you can adjust the levels as needed if it, if it gets a little too bright for layering, but layering is one way to get some interesting effects, and also working with your blend modes. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. I'm gonna turn off the ripple as well, but I'm gonna come up here and adjust my blend mode just to give you an idea. Like you can get the darker colors here. I like to use this one, Linear Light, to get this darker style color burn. Linear burn as well, but you'd have to use an adjustment for that one so we can add uh, like a curves adjustment and then just bring up the highlights for this one. It just depends on the look that you like. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to like, share, subscribe to this channel. Leave me a comment if you have tips on creating tie-dye. I'm interested in reading those types of comments and I'm sure that other people would find those helpful as well. Make sure to visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.